hours. Um, whenever in future there is an activity here in which I am participating, please do not give uh, this kind of introduction. I am a teacher and, and that's it. Uh, whatever I do or do, 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 that's more like, you know, um, while going to the hall, there were so many milestones that passed by. And I cannot claim that I was uh, here or there or there. So, um, that is um, a request. I think I have made it before too, that I just want to be used as Nasir Jamal. My name is not Jamal, Nasir Jamal. It's Nasir Jamal. But that's the hell of the Jamal is the one who is in the shirt. Talk to us about a lot of things. 
think, okay, you can learn things in, in classroom too. But who talked to your mother tongue? You acquired it. Um, and when we talk about learning, we completely overlook the acquisition part. Um, I never studied linguistics, I never studied the study of language, any English or any other, how people acquire it or how people learn it. But I had a roommate who was interested in studying whether in education institutions the teacher of a language should be a native speaker or should be somebody who has native life proficiency. That was his PhD. And should the institution, school, college, university, whatever it is, should it hire independent teachers everywhere? Or should there be one teacher going, doing rounds from school to school or college to college, university to university, and then teach that language, etc. etc. So whatever he would write, this is how, you know, in, 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 in some universities, that is how they help you develop or write a word and recitation. Whatever you write, you share it with your friends, whatever they write, they share it with you. So I came to learn about immersion. Um, how immersion in a culture can play such significant role in both the acquisition and how it can speed up the process of learning. Um, we in, in, in uh, Pakistani society, universities, in most universities, barring a few, we are actually focused on acquisition. So when we talk about English teaching, am I teaching how students acquire language or am I teaching how students learn language? Sorry, in Pakistan we study more how students learn language. I misspoke. So we, we focus more on learning. We don't focus on acquisition. And which is why most of the times as I go on um, rounds in the campus and sometimes eavesdrop on you know, what teachers teach in, 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 in classrooms, uh, most of the times I hear teachers teach in Pashto or Urdu. Um, how motivated students feel because of that, I don't know. But at least I can tell how the teacher is not motivated and not even be honest. Because when you take your exam, you don't take it in Pashto. You don't take it in Urdu. You take it in English. And while it makes me feel really very good that I know how to speak English, but you guys are so stupid, you don't understand it. I resort to Pashto. And students are okay with that. Which means, as a student, I accept the strategy. They are a car, they are good for them. Yes. So, how much, how much do I motivate my students into their willingness to listen to how I teach in English? If I decide that, you know, you guys are, you know, you guys are, you guys don't have good enough proficiency, so I'm going to come down from this high intellectual pedestal and I'm going to come down to your level. If you were honest about it, then we would be differently dealing with students than the way perhaps most of us deal with them. So, why it's important that I have the skill as a teacher and know about all the principles or rules, but I think there is a little more to teaching of any discipline, particularly language, how I establish or do not establish my human bond with them. Do I respect students? Do I respect their feedback? Like one of the students said, most of the times teachers finish their class um, asking students if they have any questions. And most of the times, students don't ask questions, which can mean two things. They have understood everything that the teacher taught, so they have no question in their mind. Or, they have so many questions. The time that I leave for questions is too short. Both are judgment calls, one on student, the other on teacher. And each is happy with the judgment path that has to him or her or them. Or we can also look at it this way, that if ever a student spoke in the class, how 
actually I received it? Did I respect his her opinion? Or did I, before I could answer the question, started my reply, that's such a simple question. And since nobody wants to ask simple questions, we are in universities, we must ask complicated questions. Or sometimes, some teachers even go to the extreme and say, that's such a stupid question. Uh, such a stupid reply, Mr. Teacher. No question is stupid. And if there is somebody who calls a question stupid, trust me, the guy who said that that question is stupid, he is the emperor of the kingdom of stupidity. <coughs> so while I'm happy, I, I ask them if they have any questions, they don't ask any questions. Ha ha ha, never took that. Well, why don't they ask questions? <laughs> so, no, curious. Did I, did, did I respect a student's comment? Did I respect a student's comment in the class? If yes, even if it's wrong, can I say, when well done, that's a very good effort, let's see what others have to say. That all? And that we see, we are not only talking to the student, we go to his background too. Or her background. Yeah, it's serious. So let's let's revisit the way we teach English or any other language. Let's revisit. Yesterday I made a comment. Then if we are looking for a job, we have one. But if we mean it, when we say we are teachers, then it is a challenge. Because each thing you say, each thing you do, and the way you dress up, and the way you deal with students, and the way you deal with people whom you don't even know, all that is very, very closely observed and watched by your students. And whatever, however you do, is what they do. So if my students fail as a teacher, it's actually my failure. If, if potential employers tell me, which is what they did, three of them, that our students don't have very good communication skills, that 50% decision the board makes that they are not going to hire those people, before they say anything, after they enter into the room. Why? Because they are dressed up in a manner which is very rigid. They talk in a manner which is very rigid. We talk to people and like, oh, it's like, oh, it's like, I hate you. We don't do that. Even if you mean to say good, we say it in a manner that we are a mother. See, it's not just the principles. It's not just the rules. Because you can have a program made Artificial intelligence has reached a level where you can actually program things in a manner where the computer can teach everything. If language or pharmacy or chemistry or any discipline could be taught only by following certain principles, there has to be that human element. And that human element comes only when you give a very, very clear message to your students that whatever they say will be respected. That even if they come late to the class, you will not snuff. <laughs> and, and if you can take it, make a joke about it. If he or she is smart, he or she will get the message. No, each one of us is doing the job of a teacher, but we are not teachers. We are more like Canada, bureaucrat, Babu, Bagara Bagara. We have eliminated that human element. We talk in a very militant, aggressive, violent manner. And those of you who are interested in studying language, pay attention to how we say the University Samawala Dakara Bamunga Jahad to a language like a Jahad is a very violent thing. You kill or you're killed. Nobody says, we will make an effort. No, we will wage a holy war against you. It's like, come on, don't do that. 
So keep that human element in mind. And keep this as a teacher in mind. Why my students are not motivated? But the the injection is not the same, then we will talk to them. Okay, they are demotivated. What do I do? It's very easy to teach those who are motivated. We have to assumption. It's very easy to take a raw material which is really very good quality and turn it into a good finished product. How can I work with a raw material which perhaps is not as good? We know what kind of students visit us or come and join our university. And we thank them and we are proud of them. Can I as a teacher say something because of which my students can say, it is a humble university, it is a poor university, but we are proud of our teachers. Can we say that? Have I given them the reasons to say that? So it's not it takes two to tango. It's not just students, it's not just, it's not just teachers, it's not just this or that. So if you look at it from this point of view, since you don't pay me well, I'm not going to do my job well. But then it's a job, it's not teaching. Teaching is a very, very, very different profession. Most of us, like John Marshall, said, are in it because we couldn't find anything else. If that is where I have come from, I'm not going to motivate, forget about motivating, I will demotivate those who are motivated. And my last comment, I overheard one teacher say this in the class, Wherever I heard it is not important, that's geography. That's what I say, Mr. Papa said, that's the most important thing, that's the most important thing, that's the most important thing. Of course, exaggerated the tone, made it sound a little more funny, but if I'm that kind of a teacher, God bless those students, and God bless that university, and God bless those people who send their kids to that place. And God bless you too. Thank you. Let's copy it down. By the letter, you have to write a formula of proper sentences. Can you see all these kind of issues? Then, uh, as I talked about assessment work, I'm not good classes in the hotel now. assignments, chapter. I don't think so. The teacher would be able to check your assignments or properly check your assignments. Or plus, we have to give you feedback in order for me to assess the level of Give you feedback at intervals so that you can improve yourself. That's it, but I am a science teacher.
You will fail. 
Thank you.